hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Spiritual Motivation. And we are back with another Bible study lesson. This time, we are back with Bible study from part two, the New Testament. So this will be Bible study lesson one, part two. Okay? That's what this will be labeled as the title of this video and we're going to see so this is a brand new book that we are doing i'm not going to go through everything because i did want to read through and tell you a little bit about everything that's in the bible it shows you right here the gospels the pauline epistles the hebrew christian epistles the revelation and the acts and it just tells you a little bit about each book of the bible who it was written what time of uh, books and the dates when they was written, the, uh, from Matthew all the way to Revelation. That's what this book is, a Bible study for the New Testament. The first lesson that we did the other day, I'm uploading a video also, was from Bible study, the Old Testament, part one. So today we are doing part two to the first lesson. So we will do lesson from the Old Testament, then the next part will be lesson from the New Testament. So that's what we're going to try to do. We might not get through it because I'm using the phone and you know the phones will cut off, okay? So let's just go ahead and get through the overview. I'm going to read it to you. Let's go ahead and invite God in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we invite you to this platform. Lord, I ask that you word my mouth, that you speak to my mouth and let only words of uh, uplifting, motiv motivation, Lord, be come out of my mouth. Let the words help somebody and not to ever hinder or tear down. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I ask that you let your words be a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers, listeners, and learners, and viewers. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So, yes, let's go over the overview. The overview says, as the common saying goes, the New Testament is the old concealed. Is the new is in the old concealed. But the old is in the new revealed. So it's saying the Old Testament is concealed. The New Testament is revealed. Because it said the Old Testament, from me reading the Bible, it said the Old Testament is for your learning. And the New Testament is for your living today. Okay? So that's what it's saying. The New Testament shows us how the Old Testament has been fulfilled through the life of Jesus. And shows us our current slash future hope through the teaching of the epistles or the letters. The New Testament kicks off with the five historical books regarding Jesus and the early church. Followed up by 14 of Paul's epistles. Seven Hebrew Christians epistles and the book of Revelations. Okay, that is what the the uh, the New Testament is kicking off with. Okay, the 14 books of Paul's epistles and the seven Hebrew Christians epistles. Okay, and then the book of Revelation. All of these books were written in Greek because that was one of the common languages and the writers used the Greek version of the Old Testament uh, in their studies, okay? Me, myself, I particularly love, I love the whole Bible, Holy Bible is one, but I love the New Testament because the New Testament gives me insight, it helped me to know better, it gives me hope on how to live in this world and refrain from uh, fleshly sins, fleshly lust. I can tell you guys this, I have been living a celibate life for almost 12 years. Celibate, I have no problem with it. I don't, I used to have a problem with wanting to make love or wanting to have sex or whatever you want to call it. But since I gave it over to the Lord. I prayed about it. I asked him to take that desire away from me, and he did it. I'm not saying that one day I'm not going to, if it's God's will, that I'm not going to ever be married or whatever. But right now, I love being celibate. Why? Because I can focus on this. This right here. I can focus on the Bible. I can focus on God. I can focus on his commandments. I can focus on his law. I can focus on being obedient to 
the word of God and his commandments because the Bible say obedient is better than sacrifice, okay? And I don't want to sacrifice my soul by giving it to this flesh. So therefore, I thank God that I can stay under his will and his mercy, his grace, and that I can, he can give me just what to do, how to stay under submission of my flesh. Because if you do not know how to stay under submission of your flesh, you have no self-control over nothing that you do. Okay? I brought a lesson, taught a lesson on here one time about the tongues, a different kind of tongue. If you don't have no control over this right here, you don't have no control over you. So, as long as I don't have a man, I'm talking about a physical man in this world that I love, that I'm sleeping with every night, to focus on, to take my attention and my focus away from the Word and God, then guess what? I can focus on God. Now, when I was engaged and had a, a man, I loved it. I loved cooking for him. I loved washing for him. I loved sleeping and waking up in the bed next to him. Oh, yes, I do. I'm a woman. Of course I love it. And I'm a Virgo. So, guess what? Anybody know a Virgo? We are lovers. I am a Virgo. Okay? But now I take great pleasure in being celibate. And I thank God for it. It's nothing like me being wrapped in God's love. Nothing. Hmm. My God. Okay, let's get keep reading. The key characters in this is what we're going to be talking about. John the Baptist, Jesus, the disciples, Paul. Okay. John, Luke, Peter, James, and Timothy. Okay. Now, it say John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the final prophet in the Old Testament who arose after the 400 years of silence that followed the words of Malachi. He was the forerunner of Christ that was to pave the way and prepare the peoples for Jesus' coming. That's what John the Baptist was. That's what he did. He paved the way for Jesus and he prepared us for Jesus' coming. Okay? Jesus. He was God in the flesh. There's no need to explain. You heard what I said. Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus came home here and took up the form. When he became flesh, he was God. He was his father in the flesh. Okay? No need to explain it. If you believe what it says, it changes everything in your life. It changes everything you believe. Period. I don't beat around. I don't sugarcoat. I'm giving y'all what it's giving me. Because you know what? These Bible study lessons is vital to me for someone to get something out of them. For me to be truthful. Because I practice telling the truth and not being a liar. Because I know God say a liar cannot tarry in his sight on the day of judgment. I don't want to be a liar. I want to stand and be for the truth. Which is the word of God. The disciples, the word disciples mean a follower, a student, or a teacher, a leader, or a philosopher. When we talk about the disciples of Jesus, we refer to his 12 closest friends while on earth. They were Andrew, Bartholomew, James, the son of Zebedee, James, the son of Alphaeus, John, Judas Iscariot, Jude, the brother of James, Matthew, Peter, Philippi, Philippi, Philip. Simon, the Zealot, and Thomas. These were the disciples. Paul. Paul was known as a Hebrew, as a Hebrew of Hebrews, having studied under the great Gamaliel and was an extreme Pharisees by nature. Paul experienced a radical conversion to Christ, which we read about in the books of Acts. If you haven't read the book of Acts, go back and read it. It'll tell you all about Paul. And he became the greatest missionary of the early church. Paul founded many churches around the, the Greco-Roman world. And today we have letters to some of those churches that give us the groundwork for our theology. The key characters, still talking about the key characters. John was known as the beloved disciple because of how much Jesus loved him. He was faithful until the end and was entrusted with taking care of Mary, the mother of Jesus. He wrote one of the Gospels, three letters to his churches in Asia Minor, 
in the book of Revelation. Re Revelation. Luke. Mm, I hate my lips get dry. Luke was a physician, a physician that partnered with Paul during a portion of his ministry missionary work. He was also the author of a gospel and the book of Acts, which were both used as testimonies in Paul's Roman trial. Peter, Peter was the first disciple that Jesus called to follow him. Peter was the first disciple that Jesus called to follow him. Okay, Jesus knew that he would be a great voice for the kingdom, so he changed his name from Simon, meaning read, read, not R-E-A-D, read, but R-E-E-D, read, meaning read, to Peter, meaning rock. See how God changed his name? He changed Peter changed uh uh his changed Peter name, which was Simon, to Peter, meaning the rock. Simon otherwise stood for Reed. Okay? And claimed that the church would be built upon him. Peter has his ups and downs, but remained faithful to the end. He also gave us some amazing words recorded in his sermon on the day of Pentecost and in his two follow-up epistles. James. Mm -mm. I'm going to hate my lips. Okay, let me see what I was saying. I just had some... Uh, I just had some lotion over here. I can't stand dry lips, guys. Sorry. James. James was the brother. James was a brother of Jesus that didn't believe him. James. This is some cocoa butter. Healing lotion. James was a brother of Jesus. And he didn't believe. Mm, ain't that something? He didn't believe. He didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah until after his resurrection. James then became one of the top leaders for the church in Jerusalem and was highly respected among other believers. He ended up writing the book of James as wisdom literature to be added to the New Testament. It has been told that after he was matured, his friends saw his knees for the first time and they were like the knees of camels. From spending so much time in prayer. Hmm. Ain't that some? James was Jesus' own brother. He didn't believe. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. It said until after Jesus' resurrection. And then it said he went on to become uh, highly respected among other believers. And he ended up writing the book of James, which was a wisdom literature. And also, it was added to the New Testament. And then, it said that it has been told that after he was matured, which means he was dead, I think that means beheaded or something, I'm not sure, that his friends saw his knees for the first time. His knees, to my K-N-E-E, -E, his knees for the first time. They said they were like the knees of a camel from spending so much time in prayer. He believed, and when he believed, he stayed in prayer so much. That is awesome. Timothy. Timothy was Paul's spiritual son and was greatly loved by Paul himself. He also helped to write a few of Paul's letters and had two letters written to him by Paul as encouragement to stand strong in the faith and continue on the gospel message. Timothy was Paul's spiritual son. Son. We are God's children because Jesus Christ paved the way and made the way that we became heirs of God. So we are Jesus' spiritual sisters and brothers. Don't that make you feel good? Don't that sound good? It do. It make the hair stand up on my neck. Hallelujah. That is awesome to me. Then it say, me study thoughts. What are you looking forward to the most about studying the New Testament after spending so much time in the Old Testament? So that's why I said we're going to be going back and forth. We're going to do a lesson from the Old Testament. Then we're going to go do a lesson from the New Testament. Okay? So it's going to always be a part one and a part two to that lesson. So we did lesson one. 
part one. So this is going to be lesson one, part two. And this is going to be from the Bible study. This is the Bible study lesson, okay? Then right here, it show us things. We It say Paul first missionary. And we have maps that show us how Paul, where he traveled from, you know, where he started out in. We see that Paul went all over Pisidia, Pamphylia, Mediterranean Sea, Galatia, Syria, and Cyprus. He traveled everywhere, and it didn't stop. Look at him. His second missionary, his third missionary, it did not stop. So we have a free more minute, so let's go on and get down. On the gospel, one of four. The author, the author of the first gospel in the New Testament was Matthew, a disciple and a former tax collector. The date Matthew wrote his gospel was A.D. 50 to 55, okay? The audience, the contents of Matthew is heavily focused on Jesus being the Messiah, the King of the Jews, which means his audience was almost completely Jewish, okay? Now, let's go to the uh, talk about the book of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament, which is important because Matthew is a Jew writing to the Jews, and he shows them that their Messiah has arrived. It's a phenomenal book of fulfillment. One thing to remember when looking at the four Gospels is to put yourself in the shoes of of the original reader so that you can be better understand what is being taught. In this case, Matthew uses far more Old Testament quotes than the other gospel writers and doesn't feel obligated to explain the Jewish styles. The audience will have understood all of that. So, when you reading this Bible, like I said, when you reading the Bible, studying the Bible, which is a great thing. It's the best book that you can read. It's where you get your wisdom. It's where you become wise. It's where you get your insight. It's where you get your spiritual ears opening and everything else, okay? It's where your heart is transformed at. You go in with a repentance heart and an open mind and a heart to receive and ask God to give you, put within you the spirit of discernment and put within you Open up your spiritual ears so that you can hear what the Spirit is saying to you and reveal the mysteries of his words to you. Okay? Right off the bat, Matthew records Jesus' genealogy through Mary, the bloodline, legal line of Jesus. Mary, the legal bloodline of Jesus. He shows how Jesus was a descendant of David and Abraham, two of the most fundamental peoples in the Jewish faith both of whom the Messiah was promised to come from. The genealogies may not be very important to us as Gentiles, but this genealogy has caused many Jews to come to faith in Christ. Genealogies mean everything. It is your DNA. It is your DNA. It's what makes you, you. Yeah, it is. Question number one. This is question number one. What were the two covenants that Abraham had with? What is the What were the two covenants that God had with Abraham and David? You find that answer in Genesis 15 and 2 Samuel 7. Okay. Now, question number one. Tomorrow, when I come back, we're going to answer these questions. I'm going to answer these questions, okay? So write the scriptures down and look it up. Number two, what five women in Jesus' genealogy are listed below? The five women, there was five women in Jesus' genealogy, and they are, I want you guys to tell me, I'm going to have it wrote down. Who they are. The, you can find one in Genesis 38. You can find another one in Josh. Yes, Joshua chapter 2. You can find one in the book of Ruth. You can find one in 2 Samuel um, 11 and 12. And you can find one in Matthew, the first chapter, around the 18th through the 25th verse. Write those down, because I need them five names. It's five women in Jesus' 
gene, geneolo, genealogy, okay? His DNA, okay? Notice, um, this is some reading now, no person. Notice how Matthew started off the story of Jesus and his baptism. An interesting thing to point out is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all present doing it. Many believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were also present at the creation too. What evidence do you find in Genesis 1 for that belief? Read Genesis 1 and tell me, do you believe the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were also present at the creation? You can find that. Read it. Genesis chapter 1, okay? And tell me what you think. Right after Jesus' baptism, he was brought into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan for 40 days. The number 40 is often associated with testing and trials, which we saw in the Old Testament as the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Question, can you think of other comparisons between those two situations that we should take note of? That's, a, that's just, you know, uh, a subject, uh, um, a topic, okay? Can you think, it's just a discussion. Can you think of other comparisons between those two situations that we should take note of? Once John the Baptist completed his task of finalizing the Old Testament and ushering in the New, Jesus put a spin on the message of salvation, and talk about kingdom principle. The word kingdom broken down means the king domain. And since it's the kingdom of heaven, Jesus was implying that God controlled everything where the kingdom is present. When you meditate on the phrase kingdom of heaven, what comes to your mind? That's a question you can answer. You don't even have to read it. You don't have to study scripture. When you meditate on the phrase, the phrase kingdom of heaven, what comes to your mind? And this is just the Beatitudes, okay? Bless are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bless are those who mourn, so they will be comforted. Bless are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Bless are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Bless are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Bless are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, the Beatitudes. That, conclude, that concludes lesson one. Okay, that concludes it. Lesson one, part two. This is going to be part three. Part three. Tomorrow when we come back on, we're going to be uh, discussing the questions that I just asked you guys. And um, that's pretty much it. We're going to be discussing the questions, what I asked you guys. And uh, I have my answers wrote down and you guys have your answers. So we don't have that many questions. Read those scriptures. Give me the answers. I hope you guys enjoyed this Bible study lesson. It's, it's awesome. And I'm so excited. You know, I'm just, I'm really excited. So tomorrow we come back, we'll be going over the questions. So we will have questions from part one and the questions from part two. So if you didn't see the first Bible study lesson, part one, which came out of this book right here, you might want to go back and look at that video. It's, that video is up on the channel. Uh, and let me see, maybe I can, I'm trying to see what the questions was. The first question was, what are the five books in the Pentateuch? And what do Torah mean? And then it said, uh, what did God create on each day? That was another question. What do you think God, okay, what do you think, why do you think God created all of this in the first place? What Moses stated that man was made in God's image, what did you mean? So those are the first questions on the first part. Okay, so when you guys come back, tomorrow we're going to be answering those questions. Okay, 
I will be answering those questions. That's it. That's all. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this Bible study lesson. We ain't got deep in this book yet. These are really just the introduction back to the Bible study lesson. I hope you guys understand. Read those scriptures and be able to leave me some comments down below. And guess what, guys? Remember, we are all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace. Until the next video, stay safe, stay blessed, stay prayed up, keep the faith, and know that God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And I love you too. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a blessed Tuesday evening and good night to everybody.